So hi, Mike Rope Hunter here. Well, today another short video or maybe a slightly longer one, uh, but this one is about becoming a microbiologist. Uh, a student uh, has written a question here. I'd like to read it out here. Hello, can you make a video on how to become a microbiologist and botanist, please? I'm in class 12 and I want to know how I can be a microbiologist and what are the pros and the cons of being a microbiologist. And I love your videos and there are three hearts here and I thank you very much for the question. And what I'm going to do now is, is I'm going to start off first before I answer those questions. I'm going to start off first and tell you a little bit about what uh, I've done in my past. Well, I have a master's degree in research microbiology and uh, when I finished university, I decided to completely change my job and go into teaching. And for 23 years or 22 years, I've now been a middle and high school biology teacher. And uh, I love the job a lot, <laughs> but in my heart, I'm still a researcher a little bit, even though I'm not really active in research anymore. Well, if you want to stay uh, in research, then there's one thing that you have to know. It's, yeah, it takes a long time. Um, you have to get a master's degree, which will take about five years or six years, I guess, depending on the program that you enroll in. And number two, you have to do a PhD program. Um, you have to do a dissertation, as, as they say, and this takes maybe another five years. Again, it depends a little bit on the research that you're doing, but uh, usually research it um, yeah, in the life sciences is a slow process. So this means you have to maybe calculate around 10 years. Uh, yeah, and then uh, you will do a so-called a postdoc. A postdoc means that you will spend several years of uh, doing research at a university or maybe research organization and, and you will write a publication, so-called papers as we call them. You do your research, you publish your, the research results and this way you build up your name and your reputation in the scientific community. And uh, once you're well known, then you can apply hopefully for a stable position somewhere, maybe at a university or maybe at a company. Now, the thing is the following. It is takes a long time. And uh, usually it's like this, that uh, you're always on short contracts um, and uh, you generally a research contract lasts maybe a few years. Then you, uh, when the contract is finished and you have to find another university to continue your studies there. At least this was the way how it was when I finished uh, university over 20 years ago. So you see, you, you t it takes a long time until you actually get a stable job. I know that maybe some of you are going to say that's not always correct. There are many other possibilities, but at least that's the way that I experienced it. If you intend to stay at the university in research, uh, not everyone wants to do that, of course. Now you're going to say, well, why do you need a PhD? Can you not simply do a master's degree and also work there? And the problem with that is, oh, sure, you can do that. But the problem with that is, is that with a master's degree, generally, you're not going to be able to work as an independent researcher. As a matter of fact, um, yeah, I've known folks uh, who had a master's degree and were laboratory assistants then. Okay, um, so you see that especially in, at universities, um, everything is shifting very much uh, to the higher um, academic degrees. Um, and with a master's degree, it might be a pretty good qualification if you want to work in a company, maybe. But in research, it's really just a stepping stone to much uh, to something more, right? Um, and then even if you have a PhD degree, that's not enough. Then you need to uh, publish enough papers uh, until you have gained your reputa reputation and then you can apply, hopefully, for a more stable job. This was actually one of the reasons why I decided not to stay in research. And uh, that's why I did not do a master's a, a PhD. I do, did do a master's degree, but not a PhD, even though um, I actually had PhD offers. But I did not uh, um, want to spend an additional five to six years doing research. And uh, then... Uh, yeah, what? I go to a different university and apply there. I wanted to settle down. I wanted to stay um, in the country. I was not uh, so flexible in that sense. Um, and for this reason, I decided then to change my job and also go into education a little bit. Not a little bit. I've been doing this now as a full-time teacher. I've been now over 20 years. Yeah, I love it. And I think I do not regret it at all that I actually studied uh, yeah, microbiology first because um, in my heart, I am still a scientist, even though I have not been actively doing research now for many years. Yeah, so this is uh, basically a little bit of my personal uh, personal uh, story. Uh, how do you become now a microbiologist? Well, I mean, if you are now in fin finishing school, it's quite straightforward. All you have to do is you have to find a university or a college that offers uh, a program and then you apply there. 
um, and uh, and then you will take it from there. And then once you are at the university, then many more options will open up. And then maybe you can make up your mind if you want to stay in research or if you want to go to a company, usually a pharmaceutical company, or maybe even the government, maybe to do water quality tests, food quality tests, and, and so on. But don't forget that in many of those cases, um, uh, the tests that are done are also done by laboratory assistants. So maybe it's not even necessary to yeah, go all the way in, 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 in your training. So it, we have also known, uh, I've seen departments where they actually have uh, quickly trained people to do routine laboratory activities and laboratory uh, tests as well. Yeah, so that's the thing is all you have to do is apply. Um, now a little bit some of the pros and cons here. A lot depends at the university, at the country where you are, but I just want to throw some pros and cons at you um, and then I'll leave it up to you to make the best out of it. If you want uh, to stay at the university in research, one of the big disadvantages is, is that it takes a long time until you get a stable job uh, because usually the contracts are short term because this is how long a, uh, a research project lasts. And then when the research project is, expires, at least this is the way that I have experienced it, then you have to apply to a different uh, research group and then you basically um, yeah, have maybe another contract for a few years. Years. So this is a little bit this in, un the, the not, it's not quite stable, um, and that was actually one of the biggest disadvantages that I saw. Um, then, um, if you go to the government, uh, then that's of course a good possibility you get a stable job. But chances are pretty good that you will be also working quite a bit in administration. I don't know if this is something that you would like to do. Um, it's not going to be a research any anymore, but uh, most likely you will be using if you work in the lab there. Uh, you will be using routine standardized tests uh, to make, let's say, quality assessments uh, of food maybe or of, of, uh, um, of water quality. Yeah? So that is also a possibility um, and it uh, depends really what you want. Uh, and uh, another thing is, is uh, maybe you want to go into medical microbiology. And here I know what I'm going to say now is a little bit controversial. I'm just going to tell you that what I was told. So no personal experiences here, just hearsay. Is, is I was told uh, as a young student, uh, right quite at the beginning of, of my studies, they kind of warned me and says, is, if you want to go into medical microbiology, then study medicine. The reason is, is that you'll be working in a hospital. And in a the hospital, there's a certain pecking order, a certain hierarchy. And at the very top are the doctors. And uh, if you're not a doctor, if you're only a microbiologist or someone who's basically gone into the medical field indirectly, I was informed that sometimes um, it will be difficult for you to establish yourself in a community of doctors because yeah, there is this hierarchy. Okay. Um, so this was kind of the recommendation that was given to me is if you want to go into medical microbiology, become a doctor, study medicine, and then specialize in medical microbiology. Okay, just saying, maybe some of you are going to be upset now, and maybe some of you are going to write a lot of comments now. That's all fine. I'm just uh, saying what I've been told. Okay, so um, a couple of, um, of recommendations that I have, if you actually do intend to study now something very specific, just like uh, microbiology or molecular biology, it's very, very specific. And I highly recommend that you uh, basically also attend courses, uh, university courses that are not related to microbiology. And the reason is, is, is because um, it will make it easier for you to find other jobs. I give you an example. It's uh, basically one of the mistakes that I made, I think. Um, the university gave me a lot of possibilities to take additional courses in other areas, pretty much anything that I wanted to take. There were certain 10 credit hours that I could fill up with pretty much anything. I could have gone abroad for an exchange year. I could have, I don't know, studied anything. But what I've done is I've filled up those 10 credit hours with biochemistry, which is very similar to what I've been already doing. And I think that was a mistake. I should have taken courses in law or courses in economics. And uh, because these are completely unrelated. And then I could have gone as a microbiologist, I could have gone with law into the government again. And with economics, I could have also gone into a company and maybe also into the management of a company. Um, and uh, this would have opened up uh, not only my way of thinking, but also the possibilities. And as a matter of fact, um, also, I was told that uh, at the time when I was studying, they were offering courses, university courses for researchers 
to make a startup company because the researchers they discovered made interesting discoveries and they wanted to sell those discoveries and market them but they couldn't because they didn't know how how it works how to do that they didn't have any background in economics they were only researchers they were good researchers but they couldn't sell the things that they discovered so they actually gave uh, courses to researchers to help them start make a startup company okay just to show you a little bit uh, how important uh, a broader knowledge is okay so as a matter of fact when i finished university this is when i actually caught up uh, you know, on my management uh, i went to uh, um, another university and i got uh, some management background as well that i consider quite beneficial personally uh, so i broadened up a little bit later on uh, into other areas but that is something that i highly recommend um, 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 as well yeah another <laughs> i just I forgot to say there's a disadvantage of of, of uh, of becoming a microbiologist maybe especially if you study uh, if you want to stay in the re in research I'm going back a little bit a few minutes now is this the following um, you see if you are a microbiologist a highly trained microbiologist and if you know all of the things essentially you're not able to make use of your knowledge because you're dependent on a laboratory and on the whole research infrastructure that's a little bit of a problem you, I'll give you an example. If you want to become a taxi driver, you depend on a car, but cars are readily available. If you want to open a shop somewhere to sell things, you need a shop. Uh, you can buy yourself a shop in pretty much any city that you want to. If you want to become a research microbiologist, yeah, you need to have a research infrastructure and you don't have that. Okay, so this is a little bit um, one of the disadvantages where you're as a, as a researcher, you're geographically bound to a certain location. And if you want uh, to become a microbiologist and uh, if you say, I want to stay in my hometown um, and there is no research lab in your hometown. So how do you want to do that? Right. Um, so that is a little bit of the disadvantage as a, as, a, as a researcher, as a microbiologist, uh, you're dependent on laboratory equipment and this is not only the laboratory equipment but also the the, the, the literature the, the knowledge the exchange with other people other researchers you're going to be part of a research team you're no researcher these days is, is completely independent anymore it's all connected yeah um, so you need a whole infrastructure around you and and this is not always available right okay but now let's move on a little bit um yeah yeah, I've often heard people say, well, I studied five years now a specific field, I don't know, botany or, 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 or microbiology or whatever, it doesn't matter. And now I want that my future job is exactly the same because at least, uh, because why did I study five years if, if I'm going to do something different right now? Okay. And I think this is a problem because this really limits your possibilities again. And uh, if you're open, if you're, I think you're your own worst enemy. <laughs> People are, are so worried. Oh my gosh, can I find a job? Uh, yeah. But uh, of course it's, it's difficult, but uh, you have to be also flexible enough uh, to say, to think around the other ways is, am I willing to take a job that is not directly related to my field? And am I willing to retrain and learn more? And that is something that I highly recommend as well, is, is that um, as, as a microbiologist or botanist or whatever you want to study, is, is you're not a microbiologist only, you are a scientist, you're a researcher, you're a biologist, okay? And, and it is now up to you with your scientific mindset to um, yeah, be open enough that you're willing to take up on new challenges and to retrain. As a matter of fact, chances are pretty good that if you change um, into a pharmaceutical company maybe to do research there, if you want to do that, chances are pretty good that you will have to relearn anyway all of the laboratory equipment because it's highly specialized again. And if you have your mindset uh, like this, oh, I just want to do exactly that what I was trained to do, then you're actually limiting yourself. So that's what I mean when I say people are usually their own worst enemy. Often it's not the lack of availability of jobs out there. Sometimes, or to a certain percentage, it might also be an unwillingness of the person or maybe a lack of courage of the person to take on a new job. I tell you, for me, as a, as a who's been doing it for years analytical chemistry in, in the field of microbiology, it was mostly analytical chemistry, working with, with devices and, and, and technology and, and, and so on, and research equipment, and then to decide, okay, I'm gonna go to become a teacher in a school. This was a big change for me. Um, yeah, it was actually scary, right? But that's what I wanted to do. 
okay um and uh i just want to pass this on to you as well that uh, um yeah be open be open-minded okay yeah i've been talking mostly about disadvantages and i'm going to tell you now one of the biggest advantages of being a microbiologist or a botanist or anything uh, any research area as well is is that you can really be an expert in your own field and it is really cool to know that you are working on the limits of human knowledge you, you see i know I, I know it's kind of a weird comparison i know there are folks out there who really want to be the first person to climb a mountain okay to set some kind of a world record they want to be world champions in something in sports maybe i understand it okay they want to be the first person to do something and it's a little bit the same way with re with a researcher you want to be the first one to discover something and uh, you really have then your area of research that you really own it's really your thing okay um you're not researching this because somebody told you to research it no you're researching it because it's your own it's your own thing okay uh, as a, your own baby as, as we usually always say yeah? um, and you really identify with your area of research and you really become an expert and this is a really nice feeling to have i was once asked by a parent of one, one of my former students who was actually also a researcher and uh, we used to talk uh, he was a doctor as well also in research i'm being a microbiologist just started school to teach there and he uh, after parents meeting we just were chatting in a very nice way and he asked me the following thing and uh, um, is it, do I not miss research he asked me and I said yeah I, I like teaching a lot I said but uh, there's simply this thing you know this feeling of doing your own research this uh, I'm missing it a little bit I said yeah but then I said is, is yeah but research is very tough I, I, I told told him and then he said yeah that's indeed the case and I fully understand that you quit research because in some research organizations uh, young researchers are exploited okay uh, they're doing all the work it's highly competitive highly competitive if you don't pr produce the results yeah it, it's yeah um, so and this may be uh, another uh, recommendation that I can give to you is is uh, wherever you end up working um, you know, you'll be able to do you will have to do this job for a very long time and uh, also the working environment must be uh, must be good okay and uh, research uh, where people are motivated not mostly by money because those people already quit okay but where people um, are motivated mostly by the research that they're doing um, this of course means that people can be easily exploited okay and this was also one of the reasons why I then ultimately decided uh, not to stay um, in research anymore and <laughs> <laughs> to do some fun stuff <laughs> okay um yeah uh, yeah so that, that that's simply a couple of ideas that i've got here um yeah i don't know I'm ju i think i'm just gonna leave it at that now uh, do leave your comments uh, behind i know that uh, not everyone might uh, agree with me uh, different people have different experiences uh, of course i understand that different countries are different uh, in the world the educational situation is different in different countries universities are different um, and uh, my experience is also highly personal um, and uh, yeah this means that uh, what I say take everything with a little bit of grain of salt um, do study that what you're interested in do that what you consider right to be correct right now um, and then be open and flexible um, to you know, to change if you discover that it's not the right thing I'm going to I'm starting to ramble now um, I think it's enough for now I wish you all the best and uh, see you around next time bye bye